this. Hey, what he said, you, what he tell him? <laughs> he said, what he said, you look like a wet fish or something like that, bro. Oh my gosh. But did you just pee on me? <laughs> did you just pee on me? <laughs> I'm a pimp. We is not gonna let this get down. Donna! Oh my gosh. Hey. Oh my gosh. And then Ricky Smiley as the Santa Claus robbing people. I turn around if I shoot you in your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that book. Oh. Oh, that book. oh my gosh. Yo, Mike, my gaps. Ice Cube, I need you to come out with another Friday, man. I need you to bring back. They won't let him. I know. Bring back Tucker. Bring back Apps. Bring back uh, Will. Well, you know, you know, Tucker got saved, so you know, ain't no point of bring him back. <laughs> bring back Chris, man. He could. You just bring back everybody that you can, bro. Look, we need another Friday. I feel like gonna be a pastor. <laughs> right, right. I feel like you can remake. The color purple, you can remake. Bro, I'm serious. You can, you can. Welcome back to another episode of the CVMK show because it is what it is. I am your host, none other than Mr. CVMK himself, CVMK. Leave for them that know you know who to Marsha Kelly. Look, connect with us on the podcast. You're just gonna not share, you're not gonna subscribe, you're gonna be selfish like that, you're gonna be bogus like that. Don't play yourself. Subscribe YouTube at CVMK. Instagram, CMK underscore global, CMK 33, and it is what it is underscore show. That is specifically for the podcast and where the best products are, best fitness supplements, best pre workouts, best protein, only at www.cvmkglobal.store. Look, a lot has happened. A lot has happened in the NBA. We're getting ready for the NBA in season tournament. And the move of the season has just occurred. None other than the James Harden trade. So this episode will be dedicated to the one, the only, James Harden. Was this trade worth it? What will be the outcome? Does this mean a championship for the Clippers? Or is this just another reason why the Clippers will never ring? Or oh, never win a ring, excuse me. So I had to invite a special guest, and he'll be on the show after this quick break. He's no stranger to the podcast. He's no stranger to us. The one, the only Steve-O speaks as we return. Steve-O speaks. Yo, he's back in the building. How you doing, man? Man, I'm getting through it. <laughs> Been dealing with a headache all day, but you know the grind don't stop. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. You can see. You see me, man. I can't even keep my eyes open. I'm so the grind does not stop. It does not stop at all. Don't stop it's, at all. This is a real podcaster's lifestyle. When you editing, getting guests, doing everything, the, the grind does not stop. Look, um, an amazing trade. I don't even know if you can say it. Amazing. I don't know about amazing. I don't know. This was a wrong choice of words. Yeah. But a trade has happened. Uh, polarizing. Polarizing. Yeah, that's a better word. The Sixers and the Clippers. Um, to break down the trade. Sixers get for James Harden, PJ Tucker, and Philippe, Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, KJ Martin, Marcus Morris, 
2028 unprotected first round draft pick, 2026 unprotected first round draft pick, a first round pick swap, and two second round picks. Steve O, was this trade worth it? I just dropped the video today talking about this. And you want to know what the name of the, of the episode was? Mm -mm. It was, dude, the Clippers just realized what they have done. <laughs> they just, this whole little new L.A. experiment where they were supposed to be the new kings of L.A. with the Kawhi Leonard, the PG. You, you got the old Nolan Powell, everybody still in there, Westbrook and everything. You just stick the fork in it. You just stick the fork in it. It's over with. It's done. Because, like I said, I've said on multiple occasions, James Harden is a virus, but not only is a virus, he's one of those viruses where he could attack the whole body and the whole body can fall. And you know how I know this? Because he did not already took down two bodies already. <laughs> so now he about to make this mug a third. And then now I think, well, a lot of things that people not taking into account, <laughs> you just created a new beast. You know why you created a new beast? Connect he home. Yeah, he is he is from L he is from the West Coast. He's from LA. Now he's home. You got four LA cats over there, <laughs> and three of them ain't gonna be playing half of the time. I've already said they might as well call this the IR Lakers. Cause y'all, I mean not the Lakers, the IR Clippers, because y'all <laughs> not gonna be playing. And I guarantee you, with all three of them together. You might get 15 games. You might get 15. And that's a big might. I wanted to say 10. But to me, this trade, I mean, don't get me wrong. On paper, yeah. anybody, anywhere James Harden going to go should improve on paper. But we all know that's not the case. It's not the same James Harden, let alone the same the mindset that James Harden has, the way he wants to play ball specifically is what we're talking about. Yep. It's just not the way people are going to win in this current day of climate. And to me, they love to give him this whole props for getting 10 assists last year, which is cool. He did get the 10 assists, even though most of them was kickouts. I mean, if you can't drive and kick and the whole defense is collapsing while you kick, I don't know why that's so hard not to get 10 assists along beside being the next to the MVP. But to me, if you coming into this team, you better be ready to be a real two guard and or uh, just a tool in general. And you better be ready to spot up shoot because you ain't dribbling that ball no more. But if you're not coming in with that mindset, you're just going to bring this organization down and nobody on this team. That's the main core is going to be here next year. And I think that's my fear. So I I applaud the Clippers for being aggressive. It's nice to see organizations make a move, even if it's the wrong move. Um, so I applaud them for being proactive. But here's where I think strategy matters more than just oh, that's a key word right there, coach. Strategy, right? Because James Harden just turned 34 years of age. Your superstars, all of them, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden are all in their 30s. All have been in the league plus 10 years, have all suffered injuries on top of injuries. Health has been a concern for all four, and you put them all in the same basket together. It's like a recipe for disaster because... Or a hospital bill waiting to happen. Right. And my... I guess question is if you knock down one domino what happens to the other dominoes let's just say as fate would have it paul george rolls an ankle james harden rolls ankle Kawhi leonard you know gets a bruise i mean like it could be anything and now you're out with your superstars 20 30 games you lost a lot of your depth that would make up for that. You would basically just be out there winging it, winging it with Reggie Jackson. I think as your premier, right? At, don't be a Denver. 
Oh yeah, he's a different right, right, right. He got, right. Right. He got a ring, he got a ring, right? Yeah, so you don't even right. have Reggie anymore. So what? Other than fanfare, and I get it, James wanted out, but I felt like this was not the girl you take to prom. This this was not this was not the the move to make. This was a. Uh, I needed to do something and harder than North- <laughs> That's terrible, but that's exactly the perfect. And- <laughs> right. That's perfect. And Harden, and Harden, Harden was available, but Harden, and I thought, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is with him. Do you think Tyrone Lou? Coach his way out into success because I don't see it in the West. I don't see it. I I, I said it on my other podcast. I think him and, and, and Tyrese or Travis Mann, whatever his name is, get yeah. into an altercation in the first few weeks. <laughs> like I just don't think you can like uh, for one. Like I said, we all know the style that uh, James Harden likes to play. He's very ball dominant. He wants the ball. He needs the ball in his hand. It's only one ball, and you got three other players that's ball dominant as well. So, and they was they. I still feel like like bar injury, they're a real threat. We all know they're a real threat, right? But we also did see them give up in the bubble that lead, and I think it was still they, they were still that time where they was trying to figure out how this team was still going to work. And I still feel like it's still a little bit there left, but with somebody not on your team like James Harden would have been a little bit easier. Now you just added a whole nother person, which is a whole nother ego. It was a whole nother, like it's just a whole type of things you got to add on because yes, every athlete has an ego at the end of the day. Every athlete needs their touches, but James Harden athlete the ego and touches is a little bit more different compared to the average other athlete. So is you just bringing in another headache to me and I don't know how you're going to make it work. Like, I really don't know how you're gonna make it work. I don't I wouldn't he to me I felt like he was about to get mellow. Woo. And then if, if you, this don't work, you're definitely getting mellowed after this. Oh yeah. If this doesn't work, this is the last stop uh for James Harden. I think this is last for Star regardless, though, to be honest. This period and period. as far as it being played. I I can see that. I really can see it. So here's here's I'm going to cut to a, a break, but here's where I get confused on the starting lineup. Let's say they're all healthy. Let's say they stress and take their Wheaties. Nothing bad happens. Tragedy doesn't befall. I can't figure out the five. So in my head, it's Russ at the one, Harden at the two, Kawhi at the three, Paul George at the four, and Gomez at the five. That sound about right. What happened to Zubac? I thought they got rid of Zubac. I thought Gorma- Gomez is on the one who took Zubac. Uh-uh, I don't think they got rid of Zubac. Okay, Zubac, Gomez, they statistically average about the same. So, okay, Zubac at the five. I'm trying to see. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, because the reason is like. Because what they're running now is, well, what they ran last night, it was Westbrook, Bones, Highland, Paul George, Zubox, and Kawhi. Right. So that means Kawhi was probably at the four, uh, PG at the three, and they probably had Bones at the two. I think when James come here, they're going to put Russ on the bench. You think Russ I, honestly, that? I feel like they're going to do that. I see what I would do. I agree with you. I would have ran the lineup you just said, but I don't think they will. Because then they want they I think they come in. James Harden wants to be that point guard to set up everything so he can do his dribble, 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 step back, or run to the plane and throw his arms up and get the foul. I think that's what they're gonna do. But um if I'm them I run the lineup you just said, but to me, I think they swap out James and Westbrook. If they do that, Russ will go back into depression from a basketball standpoint, and it all comes falling down. I don't think he would. I think, like, I honestly feel like 
you might get your best rush on this team coming off the bench, honestly. But like, if you're if you're gearing up for him to be the real point guard for this team, James Harden for the, your starting lineup, I don't know if that's the right way to go. I'd rather Russ do it, but let's see. It's real. It's they prerogative. I, I don't know what they're gonna do. I, that's why it's such a weird situation. But I I will have Russ out there no matter what. We'll see. We'll we'll break down uh, this, but I really also want to touch the new look Bucks because the Buccaneers. Um, it's early. It's early. That's the best way the to say. Buccaneers, it. not the Buccaneers. The bu- <laughs> the Buccaneers. I know I'm tired, but I'm saying the Buccaneers. I said the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. I said the Buccaneers. The, the, Buccaneers, the <laughs> Bay Buck. No, the Milwaukee Bucks got to break it down. Just a quick word about sponsors. There's a hero in all of us waiting to be unleashed. All it takes is just that one last push. Activate the hero within with CBMK Global Supplements. All natural, steroid free, designed to enhance performance, build muscle, and increase energy. You are unstoppable. You can do this. Become your own hero at www.cbmkglobal.store. All right, y'all. www.cbmkglobal.store where the best supplements are. Super pre workout, Warrior Thirst, Meta Man Love, Protein Transform, The Way, Creatine Super Thick, BCAA Saucy. What else you got to know? www.cbmkglobal. That store. Use code CVMK for 20% off. All right. So, um, the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks. This is why you got to do it with more caffeine in your system, not late at night. Because this is what happens. You start, you know, putting other teams in other leagues. The Milwaukee Bucks look good, but I don't know if I would say great. Nope, they just got smoked today. <laughs> and and it's early, so I can't make a judgment call. I just feel like it's not a player that they're missing. They're missing they're missing the true uh, I will say that. I feel like Dame isn't being Dame Dollar. I feel like when they play, it's very like, oh, okay. It's kind of like when the Heat got together in 2011. That first time, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of just sharing the ball. Like, no, you do it. No, you do it. You know, and it's like, look, one of y'all got to decide whose team this is and just take over, right? And I feel like that's what's happening, too. And that's what I was about to go into. I think they just got to have that discussion. And I think they're just getting out the kinks of, like, how to play with each other because it's still, like, it, there's definitely, a, I think a lot of people don't put in into context and information on how difficult it is uh, the mental mind game it is to be known as a number one and then going somewhere you're not the number one no more. Like I I I seen it firsthand with course with the Bulls. I seen it with Vooch. Vooch struggled that first year badly because he was for 10 years he was the number one and he went all the way to the number three option. Yeah. And it was different from him, and he didn't know how to re- uh, work with it. And um, a, a lot of the times when them tr- trades like this happens, you're going to play your turn, my turn, my turn, your turn. And then as the games go on, you learn how to start winning basketball games together. You start learning each other's tendencies. And I think that's all the things they're missing. They just need to learn how to win a game together. And once they learn how to win a game, they're going to learn each other's tendencies, and et cetera. They're going to be good. I believe it. I believe they just gotta learn how to how to fit, how to mesh, how to make it work. Yeah, because I think honestly, like I'm just looking at them playing. I'm like, Dame's not taking over. You know, he's not doing Dame time. He's the first night, and ever since then, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, I think really it's just Dame is finding the struggle how to be Dame in the right moments. I think that's what the main thing he's trying. He they're struggling with. And, you know, Giannis always going to be Giannis. It's not hard to get Giannis in his situation. But it's different between that and versus – because, you know, a team he's been used to is 
everybody around me can spot up shoot, spot up shoot. While this dude can also do that, but he could come up the court and as soon as he passed the the volleyball line, somebody better be on him because he can struggle from that far. It's a little bit different like that versus like like I said coming to the league. I think they still have to understand like okay, they some teams still gonna try that wall because Giannis is there. And then one thing they probably gonna have to figure out is okay, those are the games where uh we're gonna let uh Mr. Dame here shoot over that wall. And then there are times where the, the defensive coverage a little bit softer, we're gonna let uh Giannis eat. And that's gonna open up some windows for Dame. And I think that's all they're gonna take. They just need to play more games together, play against some actual quality quality t- competition, and um they'll be straight. Just more chemistry. More chemistry. more chemistry, more experience. They need more experience with each other. I like that. More chemistry. All right. Well, let's let's go here. Let's switch it. Since I went there, maybe this is the Lord trying to tell me go to football. A couple things have popped into my head. A. The Bears backup quarterback. Tyson, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know how I go on this. Tyson. Baggett? I think that's the name. Agent. 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 The Bajit Agent, as they call him. You know. Now, they still lost. Just got smoked, yeah. Got smoked. But he didn't get smoked. Three interceptions is smoke. Okay. (laughs) Okay. But it was, it was, it was. It wasn't a terrible game. I would argue that. It wasn't a terrible terrible game. Is this one of those Cooper Rush, Dak, you know, it's just backup, you know, you know. I will know because Cooper was actually picking, pulling up quality NFL numbers. Like he had like 300 yard games. So I feel like what it is is just we just realized we got two quarterbacks in. That's good. You got a good backup quarterback, and that's good because name me one team that has a good one. That's true. Uh, yeah, I like, think, yeah. and I think that's the whole thing that I think the whole fan base was missing. It's like, okay, we got a backup. That's good. Okay, for all those times we thought Justin was good. for the times he got hurt, we know somebody could come in here and look competent and not look like a scared rookie. True, and that's the cool thing about it. I think that's the cool thing about it. And um, he, it was good. it's a nice little story. I'm just tired of everybody t- trying to make him the next Kurt Warner. I'm like, l- let him do his own story. Yeah, yeah. So, you, there's, so you don't think there's a quarterback controversy? No. Let's say. I, well, okay, let me put it this way. Okay. I feel, and if you're paying attention, we feel like um, it's not a Koba, a QB com, uh, controversy. They're trying to make it because Justin came out and said that. The, 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 he broke the code basically and saying like you, the thing's not working you're feeding me too much information and now they're trying to be like okay I, basically we all know we can come down, down to this point that Luke Gassi at the end of the day is one of those coaches that want to run his system and he feels like if, you, if I can have the right people to run my system the system is going to work but Everybody in football knows that's not a coach. A coach is supposed to work about what you have. And what you have, we've seen you do it at times, and then the next week you completely flipped in and said, okay, now I want you to work on my system. And we like, bro, that's not how we work. That's not how you do it as a coach. You build up what they're good at. You play around their strengths, and then you slowly incorporate your own little nuances and plays to the playbook that's how you do it as a coach not just oh i want to run my system because i feel like my system is going to work first of all this your first time game calling any type of anything you ain't did in the college you ain't did in high school this is your first time so your system hasn't been proven anywhere else but green bay and we can argue you straight up in your face and say Technically, that wasn't your um, system. As That's well. Aaron's system. Yeah, it's Aaron's to look for. Yeah. Even then, I honestly feel like if Aaron was in a situation where Luke is calling the plays and scheming up those type of plays that he's been calling, he's not even going to look like the same Aaron. Yeah. Because sometimes, it, it not sometimes, a lot of times where you just break down Luke's 
play calls and his play schemes. You just sit there, you be like, I don't understand how you thought she was gonna get somebody open right here. Like, I'm not trying to, sh I'm not quite sure what you're trying to achieve on this play. And there's countless of QB coaches, there's countless of old QBs critiquing this tape, especially the first few weeks. Was like, dude, I don't know what this dude doing. I don't know what he's calling. And now you got somebody where, yeah, his offense, the way in lame's terms yeah you need somebody to get the ball out quick you need somebody just quick directions which is something that tyson is good at but tyson had to be good at that to be and, and he's a d2 former d2 qb he had to do that because his physical stress wasn't up to par and i think that's the main thing that's going on here you got one side that feel like their system is the thing that's going to get us through. And the whole staff is sitting here like, look, Justin, that dude, we know Justin, that dude. Yes, he has his own faults, but majority of these faults ain't on him. True. True. And that's why I feel like most of these dudes, it's not, it's not really the reason to break it all the way down. The reason why I feel like it's not a controversy is because the real people know, the real players know, the real coaches know that justice is not the issue. And that's why I feel like it's not a cop. Like, if it was everybody else that was like, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. Like, there is nobody saying that but the people that already have an agenda against Justin. But most people that have seen him tear it up from high school to college, they know that there's a dog that lies within him. They know there's a good dude that lies up within him. They're just not pulling it out. Yeah, everybody can see that, but this organization apparently. I I do agree that the problem is not Justin as it is the Bears organization as a whole. It doesn't matter if you put Tom Brady. I mean, you would get better results, but you wouldn't get a Super Bowl. It's the organization yeah. that is in coral, right? So I totally agree. Look, I got one more for you, and this is going to shock you. Uh, I'll explain after word from our sponsors. I literally just tried the best pre-workout on the planet. With Superpower pre-workout, you have increased focus and a power boost every single time you work out. It's not only packed with 225 milligrams of caffeine, but it also has citrulline and creatine. It's insane how much energy and focus I had during my workouts. If you're ready to take your workouts to the next level, then ditch your current pre-workout and get the Superpower pre-workout to be your own hero. Y'all, www.cvmkglobal.store. Do it, I'm telling you. Click on the sidebar, go to Signature Supplements, get yours today. Get the body you deserve. You see these arms? I was a boy like this. <laughs> it's so, so it's a, it's a, it's a hard work, dedication, and the right nutrition, the right supplementation. WWW and genetics and, and genetics. So, cvmkglobal.store. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I was watching the podcast today. I watch podcasts. I'm a podcast host. Of course, I'm going to watch. That's how you become a better podcaster. Anybody that does not study their craft doesn't want to be great. Uh huh. And then when it comes to podcasts that deal with sports, or at least centered around that, not necessarily always dealing with it. There are certain names that hold a lot of weight, right? Club Shay Shay, even though they don't really talk about sports at all. Anything. Anything really sports related. Um, I am athlete. And then the break off from I am athlete, the pivot. Mm -hmm. Right? Pat McAfee show, you know. Those are kind of some of your heavy hitters. But if there were two shows that, to me, started this athlete-driven podcast, it's I Am Athlete and Pivot, right? Actually, one and the same. One broke off and became another. I'm watching the Cam Newton podcast. Shout out to Cam Newton. Cam, I would love to have you on here. I'm a big fan of your show, <coughs> uh, Funky Fridays, uh, because Cam, you're just going to be authentically Cam. Cam will have from preachers to, you know, uh, Instagram models. He don't really care. <laughs> you get the full spectrum with Cam. So I'm watching 
Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. One pinky, one love, one thumb, one love. He's like, yeah, I, got the, I got the, what do you say? I got the, I got the something for the masses and the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, hey, Funky Fridays, man. Cam Newton is Cam Newton. Always has been, always will be. He has on Brandon Marshall. Now, everybody man, know. My stake hit. <laughs> right. Everybody know Brandon can get real petty real quick. But Brandon know what he's talking about. Cam asked Brandon a question. Are you a Hall of Famer? Brandon said, yes. <laughs> I'm going to mark this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> this got this going viral, man. It's going. Brandon, Holly, I would love to have you on. First of all, I'm a huge fan. I think you're the greatest wide receiver the Bears ever had. Um, I think that's without debate. Um I would love to have you on the show. But I didn't realize he played for over 17 different quarterbacks. You know, like when I think of Brandon Marshall, I'm only thinking of Jay Cutler pretty much. Uh Uh, and in Chicago, which is crazy. He played for two quarterbacks in two different organizations. But um, I'm thinking of, you know, Chicago and Brandon and Devin Hester. And I'm just getting into it. You know, I'm thinking of the Chicago Brandon and then the Denver Brandon. But then I had to go back and look at Brandon's stats. This is what threw me off. 970 receptions, 12,351 yards, average yard per receptions, almost 13 at 12.7, 83 TDs. That alone can qualify him for the Hall of Fame. Uh But with all his stats, none of those stats include playoff stats because he never made the playoffs. And that's why he had never make it. But see, that's not his fault. There's a lot that goes into that. I mean, it's true, but I, I think the main thing when it comes to him is, and a lot of people when it comes to, because, you know, names get thrown around yeah. in NFL all the time, and the, I give them the same answer I give them most of them. Now, this ain't this ain't Nate Smith. This ain't the basketball Hall of Fame. Man, they not letting anybody just in that mug just like you. you like, if you want to look at it from a standpoint of somebody to compare it to an NBA, Melo, he would be like a Melo. There's a Melo Hall of Famer. Yeah, he'll be like a Melo. But the difference is, they allowed other people in that didn't have the um, hardware in the hall of fame because of the other technicalities that come with it when it comes to um the nfl you got to be a winner and you got to have the stats to prove it or your stats got to be super dominated that they ain't got no choice the main thing is if you can't you ain't been to a playoff game you don't even have a playoff win it's kind of hard to put you in there but see, I think that's unfair. I, I get I get it. First of all, the basketball hall of fame is too easy to make it. I totally admit. I mean, they just throw anybody into the I feel like the NBA Hall of Fame. Tracy and yeah, I mean broke it. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of names in the NBA Hall of Fame. It's not even the NBA, it's the Nate Smith Hall of Fame in basketball. Right. So which means you could be a college and not have an NBA career or both. It's, uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of discrepancies of that. But if you look at the stats on par. And you and I think Carmelo Anthony is a great comparison. Even though he has no rings, he has zero playoff victories and zero playoff appearances. His stats alone warrant a Hall of Fame consideration. Not a first ballot, but a second and definitely a third. And my issue okay. is my my issue with the NFL Hall of Fame is it's almost too hard. It's not as hard as baseball. Because baseball is like, you know, they put you through the ringer. They want to make sure you didn't have any off the field instances. Uh-huh. If they decide that you're just not going to make it. It really don't matter what you go to. <laughs> you will forever be blacklisted, right? So baseball is ultimately the hardest uh, Hall of Fame category or grouping to get into. But on that, Brandon Marshall is a Hall of Famer. But I think that's the good thing about it. Like, it's supposed to be hard to get into the Hall of Fame. It shouldn't be easy. Like, I feel like you can't just let everybody in. Yeah. And I think 
the, I think mainly the NBA messed that up. They made it to a, like, it's just too many great people that we got to give them some type of knowledge. No, you don't. That's the same thing. I, I, when I was a kid, I used to think of, I'm like, y'all do realize, like, y'all can't retire at all these numbers, right? Like, y'all do realize y'all going to have to be like, yeah, it's retired, but he could wear it, right? <laughs> like, y'all going to have to start doing that because y'all just retiring too many numbers. Yeah. Like, and nobody think be going to no Boston, I mean, the LA Lakers and going to the Boston Celtics wearing 53. They're not going to do that. And it's just, if you make it such a big, like, it just gives somebody to strive for to realize, like, and it gives a lot of players not a chance to be delusional, be like, oh, like, there's only, like, with that, when somebody like Brandon Marshall say that it, it's Caton, but you don't hear nobody, just anybody be like, oh, I think I'm a hard famer. You ain't gonna like you ain't gonna hear no oh Mauricio Jones Drew. I think I'm a Hall of Famer. No, you not. MJD. <laughs> no, you not. But like I, I kinda like it. Like, yeah, I do agree. At times I feel like I won't even say it's too hard. I feel like at times the NFL don't have a exact criteria of how to make the NFL uh, Hall of Fame versus the NBA. There's a criteria. We know how you're going to make it. If you was good in high school, bad in college, and you did something in the NBA, you most likely going to make it. I forget who it was, but I, I forget his name. I knew who it was, but it was like the 80s wide receiver for Dallas. You remember that dude? Like he... um it's a couple years ago. He he been waiting to get to see if he was gonna get. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The old man, old man. Yeah, I remember that. and that he was hurt. Man. And I, I I bet there. I bet I sat there at that time. I I was I was young, so I didn't know much about him. And I looked him up, and I was like, dude, this bug is a hall of famer. What is it? he should have been this bug three years ago? What's going on? Yeah. And I think they put him in like a year or two later after that. But it's just like. There's been too many people that, that haven't got the chance to actually go to the ceremony because you waited too long. Because your criteria are not up to par. Y'all need to sit down and come up with a new criteria list to this NFL Hall of Fame because that's I feel like that's the only thing. I feel like it should be hard, but the criteria needs to be more explained. Well, I got another one for you, and I'll close with this. And it's a two-part question. This quarterback... It's thrown for 32,000 yards. 32,000. You, you saying Eli, ain't it? 194 TDs, 123 interceptions. Completion percentage at 60%, 59.9, 7.2 yards on average, rating at 85.2. He has an MVP and he has one Super Bowl appearance. Oh. Is Cam Newton a Hall of Famer? No. What? what? <laughs> no. It, why not? I think him is, but why not? <laughs> His career got cut short. That doesn't mean anything. So it's both. I mean, like, there's a lot of careers that get cut short. Uh, Steve Young's career was cut short. Steve Young won championships. He had the inherited Montana team, though. Yeah, but it's with an S still. <laughs> what a S. He don't have any. He got an appearance. Like, I'm not oh, no. appearance. Do Eli? Do Eli make the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Why? Be solely because of the two championships. Ain't my point. That is not, not career gets, stats. <laughs> not exactly. Not yeah. career stats. You can have the career stats, but the career stats then equal wins. They don't care. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, ah, Cam, you're not, you're not, you're not. In my opinion, Cam Newton is a Hall of Famer. And in my opinion, I'm going to be 100. He should still be in the NFL. Today. Why would he can't throw? We know, we can, we, we don't know why you're making that. He never could throw. He could Just throw. Just because you could throw far don't mean you could throw. He, he could throw. If I was so tired as hot, <laughs> argue this one. Yeah, yeah, bro. I don't, ain't nothing, he can't throw. I want you to go watch before you shut your eyes tonight. Just go watch. Don't watch highlights. I just want to throw. Just look up bad balls from Cam Newton because it's gonna be over ten minutes long. He could throw. The first of all, he was not accurate. Who outside of Steve Smith? And he had okay in one year. Well, he became good. And then they traded him. Um, 
who's the wide receiver they got into it with cam oh kelvin uh kelvin. Kelvin benjamin yeah, yeah benjamin yeah yeah he never really had a receiver core that's true i get that yeah right. he didn't have an x and a y he had an x and steve and then steve's gone Dang, yeah, greg olsen yeah. <laughs> they did have greg olsen but the bears had greg olsen so um, you know, but Greg Olsen wasn't, wasn't Travis, it wasn't Kelsey, you know. So hey, he was Travis for the time. <laughs> no, you catching that bug like Travis at the time. Oh man, he didn't have an X and a Y. Let's just say that he had an X. And um, you know, to do what he did with the pieces that were around him, that was special. Um you know, once. I gotta do his once. I mean Okay, if you did it once and he did, got that championship, maybe we having this conversation. You didn't. <laughs> not only did you make it then, but you made it then, got smoked. He look. He he. It was. He was and wrong. I get it. He definitely willed that team to right. a Super Bowl. Yes, he did. But like, I need more. Give it. Put him on a team, bro. He not gonna do nothing now. I I'd put him over Zach Wilson right now. They just named Aiden O'Connell the starting line, the quarterback for the Raiders. He not right. even better than him. No, he's better than Aiden. He not. I'm telling you, he y'all, cannot there's, throw. There's a conspiracy. There's has- not conspiracy. He already couldn't throw. Then he hurt his shoulder. Then his throwing got even worse. He can't throw, bro. He hurt his shoulder because he didn't have any protection when you're running quarterback. I don't care why he got he ain't got he got the surgery surgery and he still and he looked worse after that. Look, look. He should have been running through them hoes, you doing quarterback draws, and, and you just because you were six five, you should have been more careful with your thing and learn how to throw. So oh my gosh. Can't do it. Can't oh do it. Gosh. Not on duty. No, yeah, he was like, not on not, duty. Won't do it. Hey, he was like, not, not on duty. duty. Won't do it. Won't do it. Not on duty. Not on duty. <laughs> not on duty. Holy moly donut shop, man. <laughs> Holy moly donut shop. Hey, it was like, hey, bro, Friday after that. All the Fridays are hilarious, but Friday after next. Oh, We're my stupid. God. <laughs> We're straight oh, stupid. Yes, so many lies. <laughs> Cat wheels, bro. <laughs> David, yeah. hey, hey, just all, all, just that whole. I am a boy. Oh, yeah. We are not in prison anymore, David. <laughs> that is not how we go do this. Hey, what he said, you, what he told him, <laughs> he, he said, what he said, you look like a wet fish or something like that, bro. Oh, my gosh. Why did you just pee on me? Oh, yeah. Did you just pee on me? <laughs> Please, I'm a pimp. We are not going to let this get down. Donna! Oh, my gosh. Hey. Oh, my gosh. And then Ricky Smiley as the Santa Claus robbing people. I turn around if I shoot you in your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that oh. Oh, that oh, my gosh. Yo, Mike, send my apps. Ice Cube, I need you to come out with another Friday, man. I need you to bring back. They won't let him. I know. Bring back Tucker. Bring back apps. Bring back Uh, Will. You know, you know, Tucker got saved. So, you know, ain't no point of bringing him back. (laughs) Bring back Chris, man. He could, you just bring back everybody that you can, bro. Look, we need another Friday. I feel like. going to be a pastor. (laughs) All right, right. I feel like you can remake. The color purple, you can remake. Bro, I'm if serious. You can, if you know, if you, I'm just about to say, if you yeah. can redo Coming to America too, right? You done redid every other movie. You can redo a Friday. So that's I'm not, not allowing him to do it. Every time he get a script, then Mus talking about, well, we want to change, Muck. I didn't need your help with the first three. <laughs> let you work, let you work, just like yep. they need to let let Russ work. You see Russ take down the Chiefs. Let Russ cook. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, we let, Russ, back. Oh, y'all, let Russ cook. We ain't jumping back on that board. Bro. Let Russ cook. Steve, where can they connect with you, man? Hey, Steve will speak some that thing. NBA Central as well as Bear Central. 
Y'all, and if you want to keep seeing amazing guests like we have on today, see little speech, you know what you got to do. Subscribe to the page, y'all. CVMK, what you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Everybody's like, what am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? <laughs> hey. What am I waiting for? <laughs> oh, my gosh. The scary movie. Wa- Yo, bring back some real movies. I want to laugh. Yo, enough of this PC stuff. Even if if it's funny, it's funny, yo. I hate to say it like that, but we didn't got too soft, too soft. whatever. Yeah, soft. You can't say look. If it's funny, I'll get offended over everything. If it's funny, it's funny. CVMK. It is what it is. Underscore show. CVMK underscore global. CVMK thirty three. And where the best protein is, the best pre workouts, and the best creatine. www dot c v m k global dot store and until next time guys thanks if you think exercise alone got me looking like this well think again CVMK Global Super Thick got me right. I'm obsessed and yeah, I won't stop talking about it because it helped me grow in all the right places. Its creatine provides a fast and reliable way to increase your power, size, and shape. And it's scientifically proven to help you reach your physical goals in a safe, controlled manner. So if you want to increase muscle size, pump, and thickness in your muscle groups, you need Super Thick.